thing on the posters here, on the open door. And I was, uh, it was a confirmation to me because I wanted to read about that open door this morning. And it's in, of course, Revelation 3 and verse 7. The angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things say of he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the uh, here, David, he that openeth no man shut up, and shut up no man open it. I know that works. You know that is set before me an open door. That should have occurred this morning. And no man can shut it without half the little strength, say a little strength. And has kept my words, kept my words. And has not denied my name. So the three things that Jesus came into the church of Philadelphia on. What did that do for Philadelphia to keep these three things? Verse 10, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, yes. which shall come upon all the world. Not in 70 AD to the city of Jerusalem by one Roman army, this is not a terrorist doctrine today. All the world, which could not happen until all the world was involved in all the world's business like the one world government today. Every nation is involved in this. So he's going to keep us from the hour of temptation which will come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. The word will come quickly so fast that was thou hast to let no man take your time. Lord, I thank you for the reading of this word today that I've written this powerful for a few moments. Let your word be preached. And then confirm it by little signs and wonders and miracles. I thank you you're going to do it. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Father, I am the clay. Hold me and make me after thy will while I am you. Still. Everyone said amen. Amen. as you may be. Now, I want to point out a few factors of what is going to occur here this morning. One thing is for sure that God is going to do. We know that shall come to pass. The question is, what are you going to do with the healing after you get it? It's not an if, it's a when, and then it is, are you going to maintain what God gives you? Before God does one thing, I've got to make you promise me that you will keep your miracle. How many will keep it? And the Lord's looking at your right hand being raised. Hallelujah. You must keep it out. Every person who has ever saved, many times is tempted to fail. That's right. Many persons who are healed, many times are attacked by the enemy with a reoccurring symptom. Right. The Bible said, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. In other words, if you resist the devil, one of the preacher said, he'll get the flee. <laughs> Now you can remember what I said. The same way with affliction, once you're healed, there'll be a time when you're going to be tested. Right. Now you're not worth a hoot if you're not tested. Nobody's worth anything that's not tested. That's the truth. How did you ever get to the fourth grade? You passed the third grade final exam, you were tested, and you passed it. That's if you can resist the devil and flee from you, you can resist the reoccurring symptom and it will flee from you the same way. Right. <laughs> and when you resist it, it flees and you have passed your test and you have become a keeper, not a loser. All right. Right. You have kept the miracle. So you promised me this morning that you would pass your test by resisting the reoccurring symptom. Right. Yes. Otherwise you're wasting my time and energy and I don't have a whole lot of it left. <laughs> now another thing that's going to happen today probably in the night service will be impartation I am not about revival anymore this is this month 
starts my 55th year on the road in Armstrong and Angels. Most every night of my life for 55 years, this is what I've done. So don't think I'm nervous. I'm, I'm totally relaxed. I'm ready at home. I'm used to this. And uh, my favorite part of the meeting will soon start happening. That's where God demonstrates his doctrine and proves the preaching. All right. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, right. impartation is what I'm about these days. And I believe that the next generation has got to carry on the supernatural ministry. Right. And even if you never get to go behind a pulpit, thank God if you don't ever have to do that. Get yourself down to Walmart and exercise your gospelizing skills and find somebody to start off at home. Now they are not through you go to Walmart. I can guarantee it. That is because nobody works the floor. <laughs> The place is filled with people, people just like you, and they've got needs just like you. They're just people. Now, for all you that are depending on your pedigree, forget it. All right, come on. Come on. All you that have attained perfection, what are you doing here? Please let me preach your funeral. <laughs> and get you out of here and send you on where you can get a good job in glory. In the meantime, we are here perfecting. When God gets you where He wants you, then He'll come after you. Right. Come on. So here we are, going everywhere, operating. We've got to have impartation. We have to have people to move in these last days in a supernatural fashion. Right. If you never go to a pulpit, at least these gifts of the Spirit will operate in your life and protect yourself, save your hide, uh, deliver you from all accidents, harms, and dangers, and everybody passing you on the street that might be trying to bug you, yeah. and uh, you would know it. Yeah, right. You know the spirits that you get around when you get there. Yeah. Uh, you'll be able to move uh, a mountain with a mustard seed instead of having faith the size of a mountain to move the mustard seed. <laughs> you would know the future. You would be able to prophesy. I'm talking about nine gifts of the Spirit, which I cannot get into right now. But suffice it to say that they are for your own good, for your own personal protection, for your own preparation to be a powerful church in the end time. There's only going to be two churches in the end time. Two super churches. That's the Pope's church, which is the one uh, world religion which all organizations and denominations will eventually join to save their charter and their number and their tax credit and their prestige and their building and their property and all everything else. Then there will be the other super church, which will be the Holy Ghost people, which is going to be more powerful than any white world member of any Christ system religionist on the earth. So remember, and all is said and done, there are those who are going to be alive and remain that are caught up to meet him in the air, yes. and so shall we ever be the Lord. Amen. Now as I speak, there are Christians right now in the Middle East that are having their heads chopped off. Yes. So it is very possible that Christians can be beheaded, right. because they are being beheaded while I'm speaking. But there are also Christians that are going to be so powerful that as Moses and Elijah were on the streets of Jerusalem, destroying every would-be destroyer, every plague that they hurled against them, they boomeranged them back upon them, and they themselves perished, and Moses and Elijah could not be destroyed for three and a half years. They were dead for three days at the end of three and a half years, that's true, proving they was in the flesh. Showing that you're in the flesh and you can do it too. You're going to be a powerful church one day, so let's get to working on it. So, perfection and pedigree and keeping the letter of the law is a bunch of foolishness. You cannot get God to move no other way than 
and but by faith. That's right. Amen. You might think you earned it and you deserve it. You're the church boy. You're the first guy here. You support the church. You've done this, that, and the other. But that ain't going to get God to do one special thing for you. Because He'll never move until yeah. you start believing Him. So you're going to see some weird characters show up and God's going to deliver them and save them and heal them and set them free. That's good. And you're going to wonder why would God do that for them and not the good old saint been here forever? Because they believe God. Abraham believed God and was accounted unto him for righteousness yes. long before he got circumcision. Amen. He believed God. If he hadn't believed God, he wouldn't have suffered in the flesh. Yes. So believe God prosper here today. Amen. I just want to point out a couple of things that uh, you are going to be healed. Yes. You're going to be tested. Yes. We're going to have impartation here in the night service. I'll probably never see you again, but we're going to leave the gifts behind here. Yeah. In your bosom and in your being. Now, when I say that, I'm not talking about these hands. These hands couldn't heal fly the head. Right. Uh, if it's the Lord's doing some marvelous in our eyes. I'm saying that everything will be produced after its kind. Yes. Right. And its seed is within itself. That means that when the gift of healing works here today, it's going to fill the air and hover over your head and fill the atmosphere and it's going to drop a seed from within itself. And it's going to impregnate your spirit and you're going to take on a form and an embryo and you're going to birth one day the baby gift and it's going to be birthed after its kind. See it? Yes. The seed is within itself and it reproduces after its kind. Now you folks can speak in tongues because you go to a tongue talking church. Amen. You sit under tongues and sit under tongues and after a while you spoke a tongue. But if you never sit under healing, you're not going to heal the sick. Yes. If you never sit under discerning, you're not discerning the spirit. If you never sit under prophecy, you'll never prophesy. That's right. If you've never uh, sit under the word of wisdom, it will not reproduce. That's you right. will get what you sit under. This is why a lot of would-be preachers, would-be operators, want to have a shortcut to operating the power of God, but in their pride, they refuse to sit under any operation of any particular gift of the Spirit. They're already in a position of power, Prominence. Why would they humble themselves to sit under any man's gift? Now it is not the man. It is the gift that counts. Now a giraffe does not reproduce a head of bottles. It reproduces a because it reproduces after its kind. Now where is the seed of the giraffe? Is it hanging on the old tree outside? No. It is in the body of the giraffe. And thus, if you sit under tongue, you probably won't heal the sin. But if you sit under the gift of healing, you probably will heal the sin. Because everything reproduces after its kind and the seed is within itself. Genesis chapter 1, the two laws of reproduction. God never reproduced anything in the universe any other way. That's right. Like right that? So we want to sit under what operates this morning. And by tonight, if your spirit is fertile and open, it will drop a seed in your spirit. And you'll begin to develop that particular gift that you sat under. Therefore, my hand didn't do it. The gift did it itself. The gift operated and reproduced itself after its kind. And all my hand did when I laid it on your head was pat the soil over the seed that was already there and commissioned and ordained and sent you forth to do it. That's all my hands are going to do. So you sit under the operation this morning and let it drop a seed in your spirit. Yes, right. Jesus. And don't say you got Abraham to your father. But I'm telling you that God's able to these stones out here to raise up children under Abraham. And if you don't praise him, the rocks will cry out. Yes, right. yes. Only faith will make God move. Yes. And the only way for a gift ministry 
Is the sin under a particular gift as an offer is? Yes. That's the truth. Amen? That's right. Now, let us see. That's the basic foundation. I just wanted you to become aware of who this preacher is and stick around here long enough to find out what he believes. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, to the angel of the church of Ephesus, I have this against you. What, Jesus says something against me? Yes. You have left your first love. I didn't know I lost my first love. You didn't lose it. You left it. Yeah. Yeah. Big difference. Oh, yeah. If I lose it, I'll probably never find it. But if I left it, I know just where it is. I'll go back to it. Yes! yes. Yeah. Now, we're in the last days. Yes, sir. We're in a desensitized generation. Yes, yes, we're Peter on the day of Pentecost said, Save yourself from this on to war generation. On to war means backwards. Everything in this generation backwards. Up is down, down is up. Black is white, white is black. Uh, good is evil, evil is good. And here's how you know when they're lying to you, their lips will be moving. Hallelujah. <laughs> Whatever they tell you, the opposite will be the truth. I said the opposite would be the truth because it's an on to war generation. Save yourself from it. Yes. So if you don't love Jesus this morning as much as you did the first day he saved you, you had left your first love. Now we gotta start loving him some more. Catch up all here. Don't look to your laurels as though you're going to rest on something other than the rock of ages. Yeah, that's right. If you do not get your love back, your first love. And besides, he says, sin that you lost it, so repent and do your first work. Yeah. Yeah. I will put your lights out. I'm talking about Jesus now. This is Jesus speaking to one of the seven churches of Asia. Now the seven churches spoke of seven different churches. And I believe Paul found it. Uh, they speak of seven periods of church history. They speak of your church. And they speak of you as an individual. Fourfold application. Okay? Now, get your first love back or he'll put your lights on. I don't think Jesus said that. Yes, he did. He said, if you don't repent and get back your first love, I will remove your candlestick. I'll put your light out. I might even put your church's light out. Be canvassing for the church. That's right. All right, I've got to hasten here because I can't dwell on it. On to the angel of the church of Smyrna. You're going to have tribulation 10 days, and I want you to watch your attitude and be faithful on the death. Faithfulness is more important almost than faith. Only faith will get God to move, and it's good to have faith. But God wants you to have the baptism of faith. That is the fullness of faith. Baptism is fullness. What is the baptism of faith? It is faith fullness. Fullness of faith. Amen. And if you are faithful unto death and you watch your attitude, someone said, I, I don't want to do that. It's killing my flesh. Be faithful unto death. Die unto self. Live the crucified life. Take up your cross. Deny yourself. And follow me. And if you don't be faithful on the day, even to dying out of the flesh, you're going to be hurt on the second day. I don't because that's the day of fire. The book of Revelation says the second day is the day of fire. I'm not going to elaborate on that. You already know that. So Jesus had something against the church world. And I want to make sure this morning that you're going to the right church. How many of you like you are? Yes, sir. You'll know in a couple more minutes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Under the age of the church of Pergamus, I have this against you that you have Balaam in the midst. Get him out. What's wrong with Balaam? Self will and stubbornness. Chasing filthy lucre. Teaching a stumbling block. Don't be a stumbling block. It's better for you that a millstone was tied around your neck and you cast to the midst of the sea. That will offend some of these little ones that believe in me, Jesus said. Teaching fornication and 
idolatry, eating meat sacrificed to idols. I'm not an idolater, I don't know. Let's think about that for a minute. Is there something in your life that gets the best of you? Gets your money, your energy, your time, your focus, that gets the majority of your very attention and gene and sustenance? Whatever that thing is, is your God. This is why we spend time on Sunday morning and Sunday night to show Peru who our God is. His name is Jesus. And we are here spending time, energy, money, worship, adoration, strength, attention, giving him his due in his time. Someone said, I don't know if I like that church. I don't know if I like that preacher. Well, that's just too bad. You're doing it for God. You're not doing it for that building. And you're not doing it for that preacher. You have got to spend time in Jesus' church and you're going to be idolatry. church, Jesus said, I will fight you with the sword that comes out of my mouth. Not the sword that comes out of your mouth, Lord. That's the sword at Armageddon that slew the entire armies of the Antichrist. Yeah, that's the sword. I don't want him fighting near the sword coming out of his mouth. If there's any sword coming out of his mouth, let it be the rich and quick and powerful two-edged sword of the word of God that's being preached to this morning. So that's the sword. And I'll take. Yeah, all right. The name of the church, Tyron Tyro. You've got Jezebel in your midst. Now there's a lot of Bell sisters, but Jezebel's the worst. <laughs> there's so many spirits with Jezebel, it's not even funny. Now to Ephesus, he said, I hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans. And Pergamus, he said, I hate the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. But Jezebel was that whole thing personified. Uh, in a nutshell, Nikolai to rule and laity in referring to the laity. In other words, people running the church. All right. Amen. Now, you've got leadership, you can't rise higher than leadership. If the leadership is not wanting to see God move, then he will, they will throw the baby out the bathwater. But if they want to see God move, then uh, attain and strive toward leadership. See there? Now, anything with two heads is deformed. Anything with no head is dead. All right. <laughs> A two-headed dog cannot hum. You don't know what direction he's going in. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you listening? Yes. So, uh, it's very important to understand that the Nicolaitans were just those people that were just trying to rule over the laity. And uh, it's pretty hard to come in from a, a hot job where you're just panting and puffing and exhausted and just got to go out and dash off the church and make a spiritual decision. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Otherwise, uh, God has put in place the leadership that he has and we're going to follow after. Now, you don't have to listen to me if I'm wrong. Just forget you ever met me. So you're not really hooked here today. You're not under a thumb of dictatorship. But revival is the Holy Ghost dictatorship. Uh, God has to use somebody and move through somebody at any particular given time. And the rest of us follow along as long as it's God and rightly dividing the word of God. As long as God is in it, we have to listen, obey, and follow. If we get off the wall, you don't have to listen no more. So you're off the hook. <laughs> Anyone that dares to enter into leadership runs a risk. He's got to be right. See, he's got to have God with him. And it's God has proven the thing all the way along. Otherwise, we have times 57 varieties of Pentecost. Amen. Uh, say hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Jezebel out. And what is this? This is not just fornication and idolatry. This is manipulation. This is Nicolaitanism. This is uh, plotting and conniving. And, uh, she has uh, ulterior motives. She's got an axe to grind. She's 
uh, kind of underlying purpose. Let me tell you about politicians. You can learn politics in two seconds. Every politician does what he does. One, for a good reason. That's the one he tells you. Secondly, there is the real reason. That's the one he'll never tell you. Now you understand politics. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now he said, if you don't get that false prophetess out of there that's calling herself a prophetess, right. it's a dangerous thing to walk around and say, I'm a prophet, I'm a prophet, I'm a prophet. That's a pretty good sign you're not one. <laughs> Amen. Let another man step to praise thee, and if you don't know uh, what's going on, I just seek the Lord who shows you. There is a Bible ministry, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. What are you, Brother Clark? I haven't got a clue. If you can't figure it out, it's going to be up to you. Uh, you'll never hear it from me. Hallelujah. Praise God. Are you happy? Amen. Yes. Now, out she goes, and if you don't get her out, the first thing I'm going to do is throw you in a bed. The whole world going to see you in bed of Jezebel. How many don't want that to happen to you? The second thing I'm going to do is say, this is Jesus talking here. I am going to kill your kids. Jesus wouldn't say that. He did. He said, I'll kill your children to death. Oh, you mean this Savior is also a judge? This wonderful lamb is also a lion? This great righteous God is also an avenger? Uh, the soul of the sinner should die. Yes. Which is the sin is death. Yes. Gift of God. Yes. Because you're trying to lie. All right. Last thing. If you don't get this out of your church, I will cast you into the great tribulation. That's going to try all the men and women on earth that are not raptured and caught out of here. Now, we are facing very soon, this month, at least 40 major things starting even today on Rosh Hashanah, the Feast of Trumpets, which is today, September the 13th. From today forward, you better watch the rest of this month. There are so many things happening, it's going to make your head swim. I want to get out of here. Yes. I want to hear the trumpet sound. Right. I'd like to hear it today on the Feast of Trumpets. Hallelujah! I'd like to hear the last trump right now, wouldn't you? Praise yes. God. Oh, Brother Clark. Yeah, you're going to put yourself in a, a trance, into a slumber, and begin to get real desensitized and forget at the very last moment that, behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to lead him. Don't be half the church that is. Uh, foolish be the half of these wise virgins. And he prays them all. Alright. Great tribulation. Now, another Sardis, I have this against you. You mean, you've got something against us? Yes, said Jesus. You have a name, but you're alive, and you're nothing but a bunch of dead heads. Hello? Did Jesus say that? So you have a you kind of name, you're alive, and thou art dead. Now, here's the deal said Jesus. Either look alive and come back alive again or change your shingle. But we're the revival center crew. Well, then you better be alive. Or you're going to have to change that sign out there. Join some denomination of uptown whose steeple was up to the sky, which is the closest thing to heaven in the whole church. Now, you can't walk around saying, I'm alive and be a deadhead. You can't advertise in this town and say, if you come to our church, the church of Sardis, we can heal the sick, cast out devils, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, deliver you, you can get the Holy Ghost in our church, and they come here, and that ain't happening, and you can't do that, you're going to change your shingle. Amen. Jesus is rebuking you. He's saying, you're going to name your life and you're dead. Right. And here's what I'm going to do. If you don't come alive again, I'll brought your name out of the Lamb's Book of Life. This is heavy stuff. Yes, yes it is. You mean, just because I went a little bit dead, I'll get my name blocked out? Well, he said, he that endure from the end, the same shall be saying. It's not he that begins, it's he that finishes. We're in down to the water now. This is the time to wake up, 
For now is your salvation nearer than when you first believed. Yes. Uh, amen. Time to rise out of sleep. Shake thyself. Okay. I'll skip Philadelphia here because that was the only church he didn't do. I'm trusting you're going to the right church and that would be because you are doing the right things because this applies to you as an individual. Yes, it does. Last church. Okay. Then we're going to minister. Later see you. What about later see you? I would that you was caught or cold church of the last church age, the church of uh, Peru, Indiana in 2015. Right, amen. Yes, but because you're not on fire, you're lukewarm, and I'd rather have hot tea or cold Sprite. I hate this misty, mash, milly mouth, lukewarm, half here, half there, half in, half out taste that I'm feeling. I'd rather you freeze up than to be a little warm. But I'd rather you be on fire because if you're not hot, I'm going to spew you out. Now, he didn't say he's going to spit you out. I'll show you the difference between spit and spew. You ready? Now, spit. Now, here's spew. That's the difference between spit and spew. Now, notice that once you are spewed out of his mouth, you are no longer in Christ. You're out there, a bunch of people somewhere on your own. Dog returning to his vomit, the pit, the big pen. And this is going to happen to the church age, this church age, and all these church ages, and all these churches applies to our church and us as an individual. And this is certainly the end time when nothing seems to be on fire for God. It's going to be spewed out. And we are no longer in Christ when we are spewed out of Christ. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. My God. So here we have Jesus threatening six churches but commending one. Yes. Now, I hope he can commend you today and not have to reprove you in any way. Certainly, I know that anyone that would boycott the Revelation ministry is always hiding something that is 100% rule. But where was so and so? He is the main pillar of the church. Where was he today? Well, I guess the Revelation ministry came to town. Praise God. Talk about it. Hallelujah. Don't want them skeletons coming out of the closet, and I just got this stuff swept beneath the rug. Now, hear this. If you just, if you don't want to surface, just stay away from it. Otherwise, it'll start surfacing because everything becomes totally transparent in a Holy Ghost atmosphere. Right. Yes, man. Yes. No hiding place yes. down here. Right. Run to the rock to hide my face, the rock right out, no hiding place. So it all becomes very visible in the other world. So all that you perceive in the supernatural as you operate is by six ways. You can see it, hear it, smell it, taste it, feel it, or just know it without the first five inside your senses. And they work in the spirit world just as good as they work in the natural world. And if we had this in the church like we should, the fear of God would come back to the church and nobody pussy footing around the show in the church. Are you serious? Or they take the road jack. Hallelujah. So Jesus is we you and reprove investigated six churches, but he told one church, I will keep you out of the great tribulation that is about to happen to us very soon. How Lord, by having a little strength. I'm going to have a little strength this morning. Right. Yes. I bet you've got a little bit more strength since you heard the word God. Yes. I said he sent his word in the heaven. Praise God. Yes. Cast out spirits by his word. Man cannot live by it. Read alone, but by every word of the seed of the mouth of God. Yes. <coughs> and you've kept my word. Will you, you going to keep this word this morning? Yes, sir. Now, the reason we preached a little while this morning is because God does not confirm the reader's subject. But he confirms his word. Amen. Now, 
Thou hast not denied my name. Aren't you glad we still have the name of Jesus? Thank you, Jesus. We haven't denied one ounce of it this morning. Thank God. Little strength kept my word, not denied my name. I will keep you out of the great tribulation that's going to try all the world. I think that's a small price to pay to escape what's coming upon the face of this earth. Yeah. Who's going to pay today? Hallelujah. If so, you go to the right church, oh, church of brotherly love. You do love your brother, yeah. or you're a murderer. Right. That's what Jesus said. Hallelujah. The church of Philadelphia. All right. But if you have said, thank God for his word. Thank God for his word. Glory to God. I love you, my friends. Everyone said, thank you, Jesus, for the love. Glory to God. Praise him. Praise him. Hallelujah. 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 I've been in meetings that went for 10 straight hours and I thought it was 10 minutes. What was the difference? They were in the spirit. They were in the morning. Now the 16 people that text the pastor, find out who they are, tell them that when they're sick, get to church. If they're feeling fine, stay home. Other people need to be in the way. Get a wheelchair, get a stretcher, get an ambulance, but get them in the meeting tonight. Yeah. All 16 of them. This is how the devil deceives you. Well, I, I, I don't feel so good. Well, get yourself to church. Because if you stay home, you're going to feel worse, worse, worse. That's right. Hallelujah. All right. I'm going to pray for this sister in the purple first. She'll come down. Rise and come down for prayer. Somebody got to be first, so it's going to be her. I'm so sure glad it wasn't me. Don't worry how many of you will get your turn. God bless you. Take my hand. What's that? My hand's cold. That must be nervous and hard. I'm going to pray for you this morning first. Do you mind me praying for you? I'm going to pray that the Lord will heal your body. If you want to be healed, if you need you, then you're a right candidate for the first prayer. You're probably to vote Sister Peter and walk on the last third. Now don't, don't look down or you drown. Your eyes on Jesus. Amen. Amen. Ask the Lord. Look upon me now. I'll pray for you as the Lord shows me, okay? Oh, keep them up. These are your antennas. It's coming from heaven. It can't come from me. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is pray that God will touch you through your chest here in your breathing, where it's heavy. Okay. Is that right? Mm -hmm. How long has that been there? A while. Now, don't be coy with me. Just tell me exactly how many days, weeks, months, years. Probably months. Months. Okay, take a step of faith. Now I have to say that every commandment I give her is the word of wisdom. Yes. <coughs> yeah. Jesus didn't sit in your lap and say, nah, honey, you're healed. <laughs> and either you're going to sit there and say, well, God wrote my need, someday he's going to meet my need. Never. All right. You're going to have to put works to your faith, but you can't dead Come on. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The work is dictated to you, or the command is given you, then you get up and do that word, you discover you're being healed while you're doing what you're told. <laughs> now read the Gospels and see if that ain't the way Jesus did it. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes. Go jump in the pool, climb a tree, calm down a tree, go, go get that man of water for and say, get that meal to hit you go fishing for that man. I love fishing. Pick up your bed, stretch your hand, pick up that stretcher. <laughs> 
while they were doing what they were told, they were healed. Right. Yes. 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 Renew Ram Shah. You're really going to get right now. Okay. okay. Watch close. This time on Alice. this respiratory heaviness. Leave her lungs for the brief clear. Woo! Stop and go. Shall we say thank you, Jesus? Bless you. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Pretty deeply. Hallelujah. Are you smothering now? Are you smothering? Are you tight in the mouth? Sure. Okay. We've had this four months. More. Thank you, Jesus. Now I'm going to get you the soul. I don't need the eye gate now. I saw through the eye gate into the soul. The soul reflects every need in your life. Amen. Yes. Yes. Come on. Yes. Get your perception going, you apostolics. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You have, you've suffered with your feet. It's a sort of a circulation problem, brushing going flat footed. You know, your bones are falling down. God's got to put your feeling in your feet. That's your miracle number two. You're getting excited. <laughs> it's, you're going to feel the bones rise up in your arches now because you've got, you've been going flat footed. The bones are going. Yes, they are. Step of faith. Hallelujah. Stop. Thirdly, you're suffering in your back. Thank you, Jesus. Step of faith. You've had pressure that is chronic, comes and goes. Push it up the lower abdomen, the lower part of your stomach. So the female portions of your body. My God. Okay. Come. Jesus. Stop. She'll be pretty good now, don't she? <laughs> She is being healed of this as she obeys. Hallelujah. Yeah. I'm going to talk to you about your family. People in your family get blood pressure. High blood pressure. Uh -huh. And you've been in denial yourself. Okay. I've said it. I also say sugar. Diabetes. Diabetes. Sugar. You got that right? And you've been in denial of that. Your eyes are burning recently, starting to blur a little, and that's from the sugar. That's the first thing that sugar eats is your eyeballs. Right. Now, I'm not a doctor. No, I've never read a doctor book. No, I'm not going to read one. Why? I don't want to get messed up. I want to stop down and pray for the sick the way I do, and that's how I'm spending. All right, now, one more thing, and you will have had a general overhaul. <coughs> Oh, look at her now. She's ready to bring her and go. It's not that way to start with. You see, in your, where your breathing has been right here, sometimes it feels a little tight on that side, like a hand squeezing. That's over the heart, because the heart condition also runs in the tongue. Have I spoke to you the truth about you and about your family? Then let the truth set you free. All right. Sensation start right there. Check it, make sure now. 
Because this is a sign. And there's no such thing as a gift ministry. It has to be a sign gift ministry. Because signs have to become a gift. This is a sign that has happened, begin to happen in the last five years in this ministry. I've been, as I told you, down the road now. This month starts my 55th year on the road. But only the last five years has a sign been added to it. The warm glow you feel. You know what that's a sign of? You have a new pancreas.
dovetail. But these are the two angels who go to church every night, which I have a picture of in my old Bible. And uh, don't worry, I'm not nervous. I'm just enjoying. I told you that a part of this meeting would come where I would enjoy myself. And this is the part of the meeting. Let me just congratulate those two ministering spirits that are here to minister to we who are heirs of salvation. Very hard. 
hard job. And you have not, you're wondering if you can keep it up, because it's a, it's a heavy job, nasty job. Uh, you will be able to work the job as long as you want to. Take it up here. God will give you strength to do that. Okay? Now, secondly, you're getting dull of hearing up into the ear. You're losing your hearing. Your ears are going to open now. Thirdly, your eyes are having a, uh, like a floaters that are like worms, threads, wires, dots, spots, going over your ball. This has happened from a job that you did years ago. You were looking at a very bright light, which was a welding torch, and you were not wearing a mask. Is that right? This is how you burnt your eyes. You will now get a new pair of eyes and a new pair of ears. Along with your new pair of lungs. Which sounds like a double portion set of arrows to me. Oh, hallelujah. Whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein. Continue therein, we're looking into the perfect law of liberty here. Yeah. Last thing you did was you, you pulled your back up. Yeah. You're going to get your back too, are you? If this isn't your Sunday, I don't know what Sunday it is. <laughs> Keep 
It's just a heart failure. I was caught to death. This is hereditary, runs in your family, but God's healing your heart this morning. You will go to heaven, but it won't be your heart that takes you there. It'll have to be something else. I know hearts are the good thing. Take the stony heart out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. Her fluid is ready, her nerves are healed, her heart is new. She has also dealt with fluctuating blood pressure. Fluctuating blood pressure. All right. Have you took any pills for blood pressure? Hold on, I'm going to give you my pill. That was the gospel. And you're going to listen to it. Hey, hey, hey. 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 Hey, just want to do this to save time, right? <laughs> never up to a Oh, what a 
Jesus, it's been wonderful what are you going to do for her and for you for the same purposes? Oh God, if the answers touch my dear granny this morning, thank you for everyone at home. From head to foot, noise is not power. Now power can produce noise. But noise is not power. Power is authority. And if you have authority, you can simply whisper, and it shall be done. Rejoice, Granny. Praise Him. Now, loose from the love. Loose from the heart. Every cancer said. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, hearts feel like a teenager this morning. My God, let's go. Step out of the little world with me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless him, Jesus. Bruce Lee, you will not break in a smoking flax, you will not quench, you will not lift up his voice in the streets. He will just speak. And it will be done. Over the power of the word. Power of the spoken word. Power. Read it deeply for me now. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Clear right now. It's clear right now. Now you didn't say it's clear right now like you thought next week you'd be back on day again. You didn't mean that, did you? Say, I know not. I know not. Hope so is speculation, but no so is faith. Yes.
Yeah. Now, all your nightmares are going to be healed. Your flashbacks are going to be healed. Thank you, Jesus. You're not going to have any more relapses to that lifetime that you lived before. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. There goes your depression. There goes your insomnia. So now you have to Thank you. You have Thank you, Jesus. You suffer off and on with your back, which is chronic, comes and goes. I'll show you where. First right here. That two? Yes. That's your right hip right there. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a thyroid condition. The old thyroid. There's a little something sticks in your throat. But it's a tiny boot or very small. But it's a malfunction. Thyroid, which is why your metabolism is all crazy. Your body is scheduled way on fire. This will take care of that. Here's your new thyroid. Yes. She swallowed it. I didn't tell her to. <laughs> How do you feel the warm heat passing over you? Yes. That's your new blood. That's a sign of blood transfusion. <laughs> And the heat passes over the body at the point of prayer. Sign of whatever's wrong with the blood is corrected when the heat passes. Now, if the heat stays on one spot, that spot's healing, but if it goes through the whole body, that's the blood. Thank you, Jesus. That may not be true in your ministry, but you'll never know to do it. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. I wish he's a Pentecost because they're the only people in the world that can laugh and cry at the same time. Since you were born. Well, 
you've been born again. Why not right. the throne? <laughs> you suffered in your back, mm. your spine, my pain. Mm. Yes. You have scoliosis. Is that it? Yes. Who told you that? Doctor. Score one point for the doctor. <laughs> Sometimes he's even right. <laughs> Anything? 
feels great. <coughs> You've had trouble with your in your mouth or your gums and then your teeth. I don't know. It's time to start growing you some teeth this morning. It's only, it's only part of the body. You know. You're back like a little teeth. That's something different. Is that part of your body? Yeah. Go ahead and start growing teeth. Teeth of the tiny and the gums of her mouth. Yes. <laughs> Clench your teeth and see if your gums are sore. No, they're not. I can actually bite down on my gums and not hurt. Well, let me see you do it. You've not been able to do that before? No. It hurts to swallow. It hurts to chew. It hurts to do anything with my gums. Well, did I just pray for all that stuff? Yes, you did. All right, your blood is three points low. That's tired. You have tired blood? I did. Four to nine and eight. We've got three more of everybody's that we can respond. And there, there. That's the worst one right there. Yeah. Yes, sir. Oh, sit down. Hallelujah. Praise God. Sometimes I want to be a preacher, but they just have to learn what this is all about. Yeah. If you don't do this, you're wasting your time trying to be a preacher. Come on. Paul said his gospel came in the power of the demonstration of the Holy Ghost. If an angel from heaven, he himself or any other creature preaches it, any different than that, let it be cursed. And he said so twice. He said, My gospel didn't come in flowery words and eloquence of his peace. It did not come in the word only, it came in power. Power. If you don't demonstrate your doctrine and prove your preaching after you're done sermonizing, you're just a chicken flying in circles with one wing. <laughs> Takes two wings to fly straight, and that's word and deed. And when you stand before Jesus Christ, you're going to find out at the judgment that all you're accountable for is two things: what you said and what you did. Come on. That's it. That's all that you're going to be accountable for is what is your word and deed. And the gospel is the same way. Yes. How do we know the gospel works if we don't exercise and demonstrate it? Right. Is this a theory in your head, or is this practical theology? Say hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Well, feel good. Amen. Amen. No, nobody was rebuking you. I'm just exhorting. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Don't quit or do a few more. A few yes. more. Huh? Yes. I'm going to come and see. Praise the name of the Lord. You need new strength in the body today. It's in your bloodstream. And it's the sugar factor. Once in your family, I'm saying it now. And I don't know, you know very many of the families got there? Not very many at all. A few? Maybe a few. Okay, it's in your blood. Your strength and energy is going to come back to you. <laughs> you two have had a combination of first stages of arthritis, rheumatism, parasitis, senior muscles. Many times your muscles will contract like Charlie horses, huh. bunching up on you. It starts up here in your rollers, your lower cups, back in your neck, stiff there. Do not feel bad about your stiff neck. There's a lot of stiff necky folks in Peru. <laughs> Yours is only physical. We can help you. Yes. It's the spiritual stiff necks you can't do nothing for. Hallelujah. Uh, Okay, the arthritis is leaving out of the spine, out of your kneecaps, the hip joints. Out of the God cleanses brought from the sugar yes. level down. Yes. Hey, arthritis for sinus root. But the toy hurts. You're free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Crazy. There's nothing wrong with your heart. 
but you've been getting flutters in here. And it's just stress. That's all that is. God takes that from you. You never used to worry like you do now. You're a worry warrior. God's going to take all your warts. The <laughs> 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 warrior warrior.
Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Everyone's waiting. They look at him crisper, clearer, brighter than the eye. Let me know. Really? You feel some new energy now? Your blood is up. Your eyes are clear. God. Yes. 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 
I mean, you want to strike with Aaron's heart? Hey, hey. Hey, when the sun shines? Wow. That's it. Blame him in. Hallelujah. Sister Black, Blavis, John. Hallelujah. You want to be here today? Yes. You know, most people I pray for are here from their head to their feet, but I see you being here from your feet to your head. Especially in your left foot, back of home. What else is it? Uh, in your left foot, back of home. Say that again, I gotta get that straight now, because doctors use big words to hide what they can't do. Neuropathy. Well your neuropathy is now new.
try that. Examining that left leg now? Yes. Yes. Oh! Oh, there you go. Yuck, I'm going to show up there again.
I do, must do now what I always do in every revival, every meeting I ever go to. At the end of every meeting, I always receive an offering for evangelism. Say an offering for evangelism. This, of course, keeps us on the road. You see our bus back here. Uh, we named our bus. She has a name. Would you like to know her name? Yeah. Her name is Shasta. <coughs> Now, I suppose you want to know why I named her Shasta. Sure. Because Shasta have oil, Shasta have diesel. Shasta have tires. Shasta have tires. Shasta have maintenance. This is our home, and we travel from town to town delivering the people of God. What about the altar call? Don't worry, if we find a sinner, we'll work on it. Amen. Don't get ahead of God. He knows what he's doing. He'll use the miracle to win a soul. But mostly, uh, it's saints of God that we see because the sinners, they, they lay out of church. <laughs> so we see the saints. But keeping a saint is almost as important as saving a saint. Because you've got to be there at the throne and there's no reward on Judgment Day. Yes. Miracles are a hook to hold anyone who's tempted to backslide and turn their back on God. Once He tells them in their life and gives them a miracle, they can never turn Him down again. Because only a real God can do that. When God becomes real, you can never leave him. Alright. We are going to receive an offering for evangelism and bring the offering to the Lord. And then we will dismiss and we'll be back here tonight at 6. 6? 6 for prayer, 6.30 service. 6.30? 6.30 service. Now why do we receive an offering at the end? Well, usually I don't wait to the end, but almost to the end. Because the Lord showed me a long time ago that when you take up an offering at the beginning of the meeting, this is what you get. A zilch. But if you will receive the offering during the working of miracles and sandwich that offering in amongst the gift of the working of miracles, it will just become another miracle. A miracle offering. That's good. That's good. Besides, when God works a miracle for you, it's worth a million dollars. Amen. 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 People never give until it becomes real. That's why I never see an offer until three quarters of the way toward the end of the operations of ministry. So, I'm trying to explain to you who I am and how I am. And that's kind of it in a general way. Let us all bow our head.